Good evening, guys. Ken of Tortoise Capital Nightly Strategy Podcast for Halloween. Happy birthday to our middle brother, October 31st, 2022. So this is a uh, quick look at a perfect fence sitter uh, in Brazil. Uh, why is it perfect? Well, it's positioned exactly in the middle of the long-term and mid-term look-back periods, 0.49 and 0.52 is exactly in the middle uh, of those look-back periods, which means that if you can frame a nice tight trade and you get a breakout to the upside, you've got a potential of three to one before it gets into overbought conditions. But if it breaks down, you can get a three to one until it becomes oversold. So you are perfectly postured in, in that middle tight compression zone. Uh, it, there's an added advantage that the 10 day look back was in the bottom 20%. So it was all, it was at an extreme condition on the weekly, daily, and the tactical. And the volatility was exceptionally quiet in both the five-day and the one-day. And so it was ideally postured for a large breakout. Now, you could have taken a 13-cent R10, which is one-tenth of the range stat of a buck 28. Uh, but I just used kind of a standard 20-cent MMRB. So it's a perfect fence sitter because it is positioned in the middle of the long term look backs. And it's abnormally quiet in both the five day and the one day look backs. And it's one of our standard movers. So we are poised for a large surprising move the next day, which is today. And they just finished a contentious election that had everybody with bated breath. So what we got was, on the close Friday, the MMRB, we have a two-box gap down, and here's the OR3, and it starts recovering. So just standard entry, standard risk box, two or three R in hand, has cleared the deck, second position, third position, Expansion, one, two, three, exit, 8R. Here's the sniper trade of the day. This is in Devon Energy. So I looked at this one. Uh, here was the close Friday. Uh, it was a large gap down. Here's the OR3. It had done this. Uh, hit here and then started to reverse. When it was already moving up with power, I thought about taking a minimum manageable risk box off the bottom, thinking that it might get back to here. I just decided, nah, we'll just wait. So I wait for the PSAR flip, standard risk box. Second position after the recovery. So it, does, it doesn't even make the R10 wiggle much. It goes up, quick reversal, and then up. So I'm already holding about 3R in hand. So second position. Standard exit at the spine of the dragon. So that's about 4R on the first position, 1R on the second position, so we're holding 5. Caught a 2 entry and a PSAR flip. I want you to notice the peak. 
of the RL10. Whoops, let's get this. Lower high, PSAR flip. I let it clear after a 5R move that way. I let it clear and make that a CD. Standard wrist box. Starting to work. Second position when it gives me those two. Second position short. Standard exit. PSAR flip. PSAR is your friend. So there's one unit of, reward, of risk. One, two on the first position. One on the second position. So we're holding eight. feels like a Kata 2 or an SSC actually if I'm being honest this was that's enough of a sell-off that even though you have this kind of Kata 2 formation I really think of that as an SSC but standard risk second position when it clears that shelf It failed to fail, so why not? Third position, exit. One unit of risk, one, two. Second position earns one. Third position scratches, so that's plus three. 11 R. 20 for the day. All right, we're in bear volatile, or bear normal, I should say, excuse me. Uh, today, uh, it rolled over on the 150. Uh, it was a calm, quiet, small range day. So that's the pause that refreshes. It was not a vigorous sell-off. Uh, this could be a pause and go. And now you see the price ladders that we've established on the way up. Uh, poised, quiet range, critical state, either direction, ready to go. Bare normal. Uh, you can see that today's little range in a doji, yeah, it's an inside day compared to the rain, the violent range from Friday. It had a very small range. It stayed in the upper half of, of Friday's range. It's also the smallest range day of the last 30. That is a market that is waiting with bated breath for news from the Fed, from the elections, and just wondering what is going on. The fact that it didn't sell means that there is some latent buying pressure because there was nobody trying to push this thing down. I think they're waiting for reasons to buy. So we'll be ready for that. And then the intraday on 30-minute bars. There's your tight range day. Basically nothing. That's good. Failure to fail in a bear is information. Here's the sectors. So there's the S&P, the baseline, minus 0.7. Qs were weakest at 1.16. Treasuries off 0.71. Emerging markets and diamonds about 0.3. Only the Russell was in the green, up a fraction, 0.09. There's the 
break-even line between wins and losses, and Tesla was off a half. So a whole lot of nothing going on between the maximum at 0.09 and the worst at minus 1.16. That's a pretty tight range compression among the broad indexes. So let's see what was the weakest. There's the S&P again. So uh, materials, 0.9. Arc Genomics, Tech, Bitcoin, VIX, down to 1.5. Arc Innovation, 1.57. Uh, both Lumbers, Oil, The Fangs, Biotech, uh, Commercial Real Estate, no, I'm sorry, that's uh, Squarespace. Sorry, my bad. Down to, uh, from 1.6 to 1.9. If wheat and precious metals, 2.1. Uranium, 2.27. And now the individual companies. Uh, you got Coinbase. You got Cliff. <coughs> Excuse me. Alcoa and U.S. Steel. That's our metals. Cliff was the worst. U.S. Steel and Alcoa, not so bad. Cliff down 3.4. That should be starred for tomorrow. Then you got um, your uh, semiconductors. We're looking at uh, NVIDIA, 2.4. Intel, 2.2. Uh, where's my Texas Instruments? Where are you at? And there's Texas Instruments. Off 4.5. There's your semis. Texas Instruments starred for tomorrow. Uh, financial services. Disruptors. Coinbase got smashed for eight. PayPal for three. Squarespace for two. Meanwhile, Microsoft and Apple, both lagging tech and the S&P, a disappointment. But today was a pretty tactical day, all things considered, with small range. Um, what was better? Well, you had uh, blended commodities, uh, consumer discretionary finance and staples, 0.71 to 0.59. You got lithium, the Aussie dollar, real estate, commercial real estate in this cluster, from minus 0.24 to flat. Uh, agriculture, oil exploration, 1.35. Uh, Ethereum, 1.5. Mexico, clean energy, Brazil, and marijuana up to seven. Uh, which leaves Devon Energy, the big deal of the day, at 1.7. Robin Hood, 1.5. Rivian, 1.4. So a range of choices, but not a lot of volume, not a lot of volatility. Uh, this is a market that is poised for news. Uh, so watch the big indexes first. That's going to set the tone. The uh, companies, not so much. This is a market that's looking at the indexes. Uh, let's look at the traders real quick. <clears throat> Constantine continues to do well. He's got um, he got an offer from a prop firm that's looking to hire his skills as a trader. Um, here was, you know, two nice big moves in Tesla. He played the one that he was prepared for, for two quick R on the PSAR flip. So he's working with them under very controlled conditions. But notice the PSAR flip in both directions, one and two and three, all looking good. Congratulations to Constantine. Keep up the great work. 
we're going to persuade him to put us together a little class on how he's doing it and what prop trading is like through his lens. Uh, Nolan, in the money for today, here's a PSAR flip, good exit. There was a short indicated right there rather than this, which would be the second position. Quick scratch or quick loss. Um, this one, I'm not sure why we're getting out. Um, I think you should be staying in this one till here. Even if that's a second position, we should be all out here. Uh, PSAR flip, that's good. Not sure why we're getting out there except probably saw this. But if you see that and it doesn't even get through the dragon and it starts to reverse, you can get short here instead of here. That's where you get short again because it rejected the PSAR. And then, then you could have a second position here and then instead of scratching, you're making about 3R in that. Um, this PSAR flip, uh, that's a good scratch, good short and scratch, good long, I think. No, wait a minute. This was a reverse and get short here. I think you wanted to be short here or even as it comes out of the dragon. But still, that's a good, that's a good exit provided you get long here, scratch, long here, and crush. So this could have been seven to eight in my view, but looking good. You're starting to mix patterns together in a pleasing way. Um, this is, uh, listen, the weakest sectors can often have one day intraday pops in the bear routinely. So you're not buying the weakest sector, you are trading the weakest sector on price action. So this should be this should be short, not long. I, I don't know why we're getting long there. We should be short here, and with the PSAR as your guide, you're in all the way to here, and that's your trade. So we should be short here. You could get short a second position. I don't mind that exit. And then reshort. Good good trade. I don't know why we're exiting here. You're inside the the bar's noise. Um and this should be this should be long here. And even if that gets you out for some reason, this has got to get you back in. And now you're in that for the long haul. This should be plus three. Uh you should be uh, studying that, how do I how do I get three out of that? Remember, you're not buying the sector; you are trading it. Less on uh, the kiwi. Scratch, scratch, micro pay, micro loss. Uh, got paid. That's the one we want to nail right there. But that's a good work. And you come out of that 2.1, it doesn't look like much until you total it up. That's well done. Uh, Woj and, Sol and Solana for seven. Uh, yeah. Cotta two gets paid. There was another Cotta two right here. Um, I like this. That should be stop and reverse. And then you smash all of that. Long break in a meeting, so take your seven and uh, be happy. Good work from the team today. Uh, close all. All right, daily reports. Here is um, <clears throat> dashboard one. Uh, bearish normal. This is looking pretty healthy right in here on the ten, on the two ten and thirty. Uh, Risk Z is saying, yeah, there's room to the upside. Uh, only mid caps and small caps on the dead cat bounce warning. I like it when DIA is in my min pane 
and you still got some choices, some good tradables, Alcoa, Microsoft, Intel, Tesla, in the max pain. Those are all movers and things that we trade a lot in Brazil. Also, five great symbols in max pain conditions ready to pop. Today was the smallest range day in 30, so not surprising to see many dojis. Some red light warnings, be ready to be short those if we get weakness. Microsoft, 4 to 1. Alcoa, 2.3 to 1 on the 10-day uh, uh, retest on the auto framer. Big moves in travelers once again. United Health also leading the way. That's where your strength is. Goldman Sachs ain't doing bad either. Look at the strength in Chevron, the energy. Oof. In the ETFs, a couple auto framers, a handful of dojis. Breakout in Mexico. Uh, Brazil, big winner today. Look for more. Because it was just in the middle of its uh, sniper stats on the 30 and the 150. So there's a lot of room to the upside on that. Now that the election is over. And a certain calm about the future. Uh, here's our auto framer. Brazil and Cliff at the top of the stack. Need we say more? Alcoa and U.S. Steel near the top and Microsoft. That's plenty to choose from already. Handful of Godzillas in the green. This is a Godzilla just starting out of quiet conditions. Uh, VIX and agriculture as Godzilla, a quiet Godzilla here ready to rock in agriculture. Uh, lots of power in the one day movers. Ten day NDX. Goldman, whoops, sorry about that. Mouse acting funny. Goldman, uh, there's your energy and healthcare right there. Chevron, Cat, and McDonald's, solid. Mexico. And Brazil. Lots of room here on that intermediate time frame to get back to and overbought. I really like Brazil here. That's going to be a great trade, great swing trade, as well as turbo intraday. I think that's everything we want to look at today. Let's be ready for them tomorrow, fellas. Take good care. Don't tell me that wasn't recording. <laughs>